Hi everyone, this is going to be a tutorial on how to download and use the program MHJ for the Human Evolution Lab. So we're going to start by downloading the program. So you're going to do this from imagej.net slash downloads. So this is what the page looks like. You can go ahead and ignore this warning message here. Um, and download it by either clicking this blue download hyperlink or by clicking this icon here. Okay, so when you click this download link, if you have a Mac, what it will do is just download the application ready to go. So as you can see here, it's already downloaded the Mac file for you and made it an application. So you can just go ahead and click it and it will open the program and you'll be ready to go. Um, you will need to enable Java for this and so I've included an alternative download link in the description of this video. So if you would prefer to download the Mac operating system version bundled with Java for your computer, you can do that at that second alternative download link. But otherwise you are ready to go once you download that file. So what it will download is actually a zip file. So I've gone ahead and downloaded the zip file already and dragged it onto my desktop so I can show you the next step. But you can totally leave it in your downloads file for this next part. So there is no installer for the program. So the program's actually inside the zip file. So we just need to extract it. They suggest that you extract it to a user's directory, like I'll show you how to do here if you want it to be able to update in the future. But if you never want to use the program again, it doesn't really matter where you put it. So I'm gonna extract by right clicking and hitting extract all. This will show me where it's gonna put the folder that it's gonna um, extract it to and what the folder is gonna be called here. I don't care what it's called, I'm not gonna change the name. Um, but as you can see, since I have it on my desktop, that is actually within my user's directory. So that will be fine. I also want it to show it to me when it's done. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit extract and just give it just a minute to do its thing. Okay, so now it has popped up a window where I can see the folder that it's downloaded in. I'm going to open that up. And as you can see, what it actually downloaded here is the program for a bunch of different operating systems. So Linux up here and Windows down here. So you're just going to open whatever one of these files is appropriate for your operating system. So I'm running Windows 64, so I'm just going to go ahead and open this one. So the first time you open the program, you may need to uh, give it permission to use Java, which it will need, so you should do that. And if you're having problems with it, you may need to install Java or update it from java.com. Um, but back on this downloads page, there's also a troubleshooting guide down here that you can use to help. Okay. Uh, one last thing that you might wanna do before you get started is create a desktop shortcut for this. Um, you can do that really quickly by right-clicking on the one that's right for your operating system, clicking Create Shortcut, and then it will make that shortcut. And you can either drag it to the desktop or copy and paste it. Okay, so now we're ready to go. So when you open Image J, you'll see that it appears as a small toolbar. So this is what the program is, right? These are all the tools that you can use. So this is everything. So we're gonna start by opening an image in the program to process it. So simply opening the image on your computer while you have image J open isn't actually enough to import it into the program. So I'm gonna show you how to open an image into image J using the human evolution images, which I've downloaded from Canvas. Okay, so you can see here, here are the images. So you really have two options on how to open an image in image J. Um, the first is that you can actually take a thumbnail and just drop it straight onto the desktop shortcut, and this will open it in the program. Um, the other option you have is you can actually use the toolbar here, um, and you can collect or click file open, and then you can actually select that data file from the folder that it's in. 
and we know that this image is open in image J because it's surrounded by this gray border and it has this little image J icon in the top left corner. Okay, so once our image is loaded into the program, we can start to measure the skull features. So we're going to start by selecting the line feature, which we're going to use to draw lines across the distances that we want to measure. So you use this to draw lines by clicking to start the line, dragging, and then releasing where you want the end of the line to be. So again, that's click, drag, release, click, drag, release. And as you can see, each time that you start a new line, the previous line that you've drawn will disappear. You can also see while I'm drawing the line, in the top right corner at the bottom of that toolbar, there's a little argument that says length equals. That is the length of the line that I'm currently drawing. So you can see it says 5,127, kind of a weird number. That's because it's in pixels and we want to use centimeters rather than pixels. So we're going to convert that in this next step. So these images were taken with a ruler that we can use for reference. Okay, Oops, sorry. And we are going to use this here. So we're going to start by drawing a line along the ruler at a known distance. It doesn't matter what this distance is as long as you know based on the ruler exactly how long it is. So you could draw a line that's two centimeters, you could draw a line that's seven centimeters. Here I'm going to choose 10 centimeters as my known distance, so I'm going to click the middle of the zero centimeters line and I'm going to drag to the end or the middle of the 10 centimeters line. That's pretty straight. It's okay. Just do your best. So now we're going to go to Analyze, Set Scale. So what this shows you is the distance in pixels of the line you just drew. So this says 2,332. And there's a little spot where you're going to type in the known distance. So mine was 10 centimeters, so I'm going to put in 10. I'm also going to change this unit of length here to tell it that it's centimeters. So what we're doing here is we are telling the program that this line's distance is pixels is equal to 10 centimeters. So then it can calculate how many pixels are present in each centimeter. So now it knows that 233 pixels make up a centimeter. So now all the future measurements that you do with the program will convert pixels to centimeters for you so you don't have to do it again. Okay, so we're just gonna click okay, now we're ready to go. If you see, if I go back and measure this line from the zero to the 10 centimeters line, you can see up in that top right corner here, right? I'll draw it one more time. That the length is almost exactly 10 centimeters. One last adjustment that we need to make is it's difficult to use a line to measure some of these features, so we want to set up the rectangular measurements tool. So you're going to go to analyze, click set measurements, and you're going to make sure this bounding rectangle is checked. Mine was already checked, but yours probably will not. And then hit OK. So now we're ready to start measuring our skulls. So for straight distances, you can use either the line tool here or the rectangle tool here. Okay. For the cranium size measurements, you're going to want to use this ellipse or oval tool. So once you draw it, this applies for all the tools, you can actually click these little white boxes of the vertices and you can actually drag them to fit the shape, okay, to fit what you want to do. Okay, so once you draw what you want to measure here, I'm just going to draw um, a random line. So from here to here, just so you can see how to do it. And then after drawing to fit the features that you're going to measure, you're going to hit analyze and you're going to click um, measure here at the top. So this is going to pop up a little window with the measurements of the features. So because this is a line, all I want to look at is length. These other measurements, height, width, and angle, whatever, they don't really apply. So this is telling me that this line that I drew is 15 centimeters long. Okay, and so I'll show you how to do this again with a rectangular tool. If we hit analyze measure, it will keep that last measurement, but it'll give me a new one now. And for the rectangular measurements, you actually want to use height and width here. So this is 10 and a half centimeters in the horizontal direction from this vertice to this vertice. And then it's 5.23 centimeters vertically from the top to the bottom of this rectangle. Okay. 
And when using an ellipse, again, you're gonna wanna use that height and width. So I'll show you one more time. Analyze, measure, the height and the width. Ignore this PX, UI. You just wanna use these two. I mean, as you can see for the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool, because there is no length, it shows you a length of zero, okay? So when you're done with an image, you can go ahead and exit out of it and open up a new one. But you do wanna make sure that each time you open a new image, you do this analyze set scale thing again, okay? And this is because the camera wasn't the same distance from the skulls at every angle. So the number of pixels per centimeter is not gonna be the same in all your images. But once you do that, you are ready to complete procedure two.